The GoPro Hero 10 is the best GoPro to date, but it is also the most expensive GoPro today coming in at $500. I'm gonna share some things that I really like about this camera as well as some things that I do not like. So is this worth the money and should you get the GoPro Hero 10? You gotta just press record. Hey guys, my name is Nolan Molt with Think Media. Now the GoPro Hero 10, you can get for $400 for the next couple days at the release of this video. For $400, you can get the Hero 10 with some accessories and a year long subscription to GoPro. Now I'm not gonna be surprised if this camera does go on sale during this holiday season. So make sure that you check the link in the description to see what kind of price you can get on this camera. Now, if you're looking to upgrade to the GoPro 10 or you're new to GoPro, it's really important to understand who this camera is for. Really, I think it comes down to three groups of people. And that first group I will call the adventurers. These are the people who are going on hikes. Maybe they are surfers or they are bikers and they wanna bring a camera that is shockproof and waterproof. They also like the GoPro because it's small, portable, and has great stabilization. Now the second group of people would be your casual travelers. I really think this camera is the ultimate travel camera. When it comes to going on vacation, you don't wanna bring out your phone or a nice camera if it can get all sandy or dirty and ruined. So having something like a GoPro with you, you can get some really cool shots. And if you are that casual traveler, maybe you don't even know how to operate a camera, well the GoPro has fully automatic settings that you can just point and shoot and get really cool stuff without having to know how to operate a camera. Lastly, if you're someone who does video production, a GoPro can really come in handy for you. If you're someone who does get paid to shoot videos, picking up a GoPro, you can get some really cool angles with this thing. You can mount this to all sorts of stuff because of how lightweight and small it is. You can set it up as an extra wide angle at an event, or you could even get some time lapses with it. Now, those are kind of the main three categories where I see people using the GoPro and really benefiting from a camera like this. Now, if you already own a GoPro, you could use this as a YouTube camera, but I don't really recommend buying the GoPro for a YouTube camera. If that's you, check the link in the description. We have some videos on the best cameras for YouTube. Now, before I get into what I like and don't like about this camera, the GoPro can take photos, but I'm not gonna focus on that. In this review, this is mainly for videos. So here's what I really like about the new GoPro Hero 10. First off, the fact that you can shoot in 5.3K at 60 frames a second is really, really cool. Overall, those higher frame rates and higher resolutions definitely are the biggest improvement to this camera. And for an action camera like this, to me, it just makes sense to have higher frame rates and higher resolutions because it's not a zoom lens. You can't really zoom in and get the shot you want. So being able to crop in as much as you can with that 5K is really nice when you need to get a tighter angle. With the extra resolution, you can also stabilize your shot in post and still maintain a crispy 4K shot. And overall with this camera, I love how much detail you can get from these shots. We also get a new and improved lens on the GoPro 10 versus the GoPro 9. This new lens is removable, so if you crack it or something happens like that, you can order a new one for $20. This lens is gonna be scratch resistant and also repels water a lot better than the nine. Now, when I was doing some side-by-side -side shots with my GoPro 9 and my 10 of Willow, she got my cameras really wet. And as the day went on, the water dried onto these lenses, but you could see that the nine was a whole lot dirtier than the 10 was. And this is because that new lens on the 10 repels water a lot more, so the water dried on the nine, whereas on the 10, it fell off and kept it a lot cleaner. Now, if you're already have the nine, I recommend buying one of these for $20 and we'll have a link in the description. Hypersmooth is just getting better year by year. And on the 10, that's no different. It is looking really, really good. In this shot, I was sprinting next to Willow and I was so surprised with how stable this footage came out. I love that I can bring this GoPro out, get really stable footage without the need of a gimbal. Now, one of my favorite things about the 10 is that front facing screen. Last year on the nine, they first came out with the screen, but it was still very choppy. And you can see in this side by side how smooth it is now on the 10 whereas the nine is a bit choppier and slightly delayed. This makes it so easy to frame up your shot, specifically when you're taking a selfie or vlogging or shooting YouTube videos. The GoPro 10 also got a new chip inside of it that is supposed to make things run faster and run better. And this new chip is what's making that front screen so smooth, so I appreciate that it is making things better. However, it doesn't make everything better on the 10. When it comes down to it, that front screen is really improved and the menu system is slightly improved. There's still some times when I try and click something and I accidentally click something else and it's just not as fluid as something like a smartphone. Now I did notice some improvements but not a huge improvement when it comes to the menu navigation. However, I really appreciate that the shortcuts is much easier to navigate on the GoPro menu system versus the nine. Now when it comes to just powering on your GoPro and hitting record, it's not really much faster than the nine. There's not huge improvements there. That being said, it's still fast on both the nine and the 10, there is just no improvement. I also really enjoy having this red tally light on the front so when you are recording 
videos, you can see if you are recording because of that red light. You also have the GoPro app and it's really easy to connect. Then you have a live feed view from your GoPro to your phone. On the 10, you're also getting faster uploads to the app. And especially when you plug the USB-C straight from the GoPro to your phone, it's gonna upload much faster. If you have an iPhone, GoPro does recommend getting the Apple USB-C to lightning port adapter. So we'll have a link for that in the description as well. Now you can live stream and use this camera as a webcam. However, I don't think it looks much better than just your average webcam. So I'm not gonna be using it in this way. I also really like that they continue to update the GoPros. Even with the Hero 9, there was a nice update that came out for that. And they're continuing to update the 10. We're gonna see a really nice update here soon where they're gonna give us 5.3K in 24 frames per second, which I don't know why that wasn't on there in the very beginning, but they are gonna be adding updates. And so that's a nice thing that GoPro does. All right, now let's talk about the things that I do not like about the GoPro 10 and some things I wish they would fix. First off, when it comes to the GoPro colors, you are going to have a flat profile, which is very desaturated and there's no contrast. This way you can grade it later in post. You're also going to get natural. So instead of having GoPro like you have on the Hero 9, this way you have natural, but you also have vibrant. Now I've never really liked GoPro's colors and I do not like the natural or the vibrant options on the GoPro 10. For me, there's just way too much contrast. I like the actual colors that you're getting out of it, but the blacks are just way too crushed. It also looks like a little extra detailed when you compare it to the 9. I don't know exactly how to explain this, but it definitely looks different. Whereas the 9 looks a bit smoother, the 10 looks a little like choppier. Again, I don't know how to describe this, but I also noticed that it's a bit warmer on the 10 versus the 9 as well. I also found that when shooting in natural, the sky had a lot of noise in it. And so when I compared it to my 9, the 9 did not have all this noise in the sky. So I don't know what was going on here because when I switched the mode to flat, there was no more noise in the sky. So I'm hoping that this can be fixed in a future update. With that being said, I love their flat picture profile. And when I'm shooting on the GoPro, I'm making sure to use that flat picture profile. And then all you have to do is add a little bit of contrast and a little bit of saturation, and you're getting a much better image than your natural or vibrant options. Now I do wish that GoPro would make a good color profile that just looked better and retained a lot more details in the shadows and the highlights. We know that the information is there in flat. So I'd love if they came out with a preset that looks really good straight out of camera. When it comes to lower light situations, for example, when you're shooting inside, this was shot inside during daylight. There's not that much noise. And I compare this to my front facing camera on my iPhone 13. There's not much of an improvement when it comes to the Hero 10 in low light. So if you have something like the nine, you can expect the same results. Now I'm gonna let you hear what it sounds like with the built-in microphone on the GoPro Hero 10, as well as the audio coming from the microphone on the media mod plugged into the 10. This is what it sounds like with the built-in microphone on the GoPro Hero 10. This is what it sounds like with the front microphone on the media mod. Now you can hear that both of them really don't sound that good. And in my opinion, the media mod sounds worse, which means to get good audio, you have to put a shotgun microphone on the GoPro and plug it into your media mod. And for me personally, that kind of takes away a lot from the GoPro. I like that it's small and it's compact. And I wish that the built-in microphone was really good on the GoPro, or at least the media mod had a really good shotgun microphone. If I could just take this thing out and have really good audio without having to bring on a shotgun microphone, I would use this a lot more to get quick little vlogs with it. Now, lastly, I wish that they had a thread on the bottom of the GoPro for your classic tripod adapters. Now I know that you actually can remove this and buy one that has that, but GoPro, come on, give us that in the next camera, please. I wanna be able to just throw this onto a selfie stick or a tripod without having to get an adapter. All right, so now you're asking, who do I actually recommend this camera for? Well, first of all, it's a great little action camera and it's super powerful for its size. The fact that you can shoot 5.3K, 60 frames per second, and shoot some really high frame rates in 4K makes this thing really cool to use. But honestly, besides some of those increased frame rates and the improved selfie screen, there's not much of a difference between this and the nine, especially when you just look at the image quality side by side and the audio, they're almost the same. So are those improvements on the 10 worth an extra $100? Well, for some it might be, but for most, I don't think it is. Like I said, this is the best GoPro available and the most expensive. So if you have the money to buy this thing, then go ahead and buy this if you're looking for the best action camera. But personally for me, I would not be buying the GoPro Hero 10 unless it was on sale and I could find it for a deal. And if that wasn't the case, then personally, I would end up buying the GoPro Hero 9. Now I did a lot of tests between the nine and the 10. And if you click on the screen, you can see how I came to the conclusion on why I would buy the nine versus the 10. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video.